Hey guys, today we're going to do a walkthrough of the garden. Um, it's late summer. A lot of things have played out. The early tomatoes are played out. Um, you're played out. But growing up, we, we thought of gardening as a summer, a summer crop. That's what we did. We just did a summer crop. Honestly, Daddy almost killed us in the summer, so we lost weight. He really worked us hard, so we're kind of glad we didn't do a fall crop in, in growing up. But we're going to walk through and show y'all we've got some fall peas planted, which we've never did that growing up. We never did that growing up, so I'm excited to see how those do. I've got some fall green beans planted and some fall snow peas. We still have some late tomatoes coming in, um, but we're going to do a walkthrough of the garden and let y'all see what's going on. So trying to get people to um, not just think about growing their vegetables in the summer, but to branch out and extend your growing season. So let's come take a look at it. So these, this is the fall peas. This is, this is actually where we did the summer peas too. Um, so we kind of got busy putting up corn and other things when the peas were coming in. So we didn't get as many put in the freezer as we wanted to. So we decided to go ahead and um, plant a fall crop. So, so these are the pink eyed purple hulls. This row and that row are pink eyed purple hull peas. We did a wide row with two, um, two rows of peas down each. Um, it helps keep the weeds down, makes it easier to, to keep the weeds controlled. So these two rows are pink-eyed purple hull. We just decided to play and experiment and we actually planted these. These last three rows are actually black-eyed peas that we bought from Kroger, dried black-eyed peas from Kroger. So um, it's pretty cool to see them come up they're not quite as pretty. They don't look quite as good as the as the peas we actually bought from the co-op, but still, I'm anxious to see see what they do. And but these are still black eyed peas, though. Yeah, those are pink eyed. Those pink eyed purple hole black eyed yeah, peas. Yeah, just we don't know the variety on these, but they're all black eyed peas. Yeah, we don't know what the variety is on those, so. But so these and these are one. These are rows that we planted. This patch over here. That's actually um, volunteer from the summer crop. So Patrick bush hog those, and then you, you tilled them a little bit too, didn't you? Yeah, so. just uh, whatever was left in the pods just came up. Yeah, I think that's cool. So we couldn't really decide what we were gonna do with them. So I think we're just gonna let them go, aren't we? Yeah, I'm trying to figure out how to do this transitioner right here. <laughs> I mean, they're, they're very, very thick. Too thick. Yeah. I'm not really sure. I'm not sure what that's going to do. So. Well, it's going to stress them out. They won't produce as well as if they were thinned out. So do we need to go down the rows with the tiller? Well, it's going to tear up a bunch of stuff now. I mean... Because they've gotten so big. Yeah. I mean, just like having, you know, too many pigs in the pen. I mean, they're, they're just not going to get enough to eat. And yeah. But they're going to get stressed out. But won't it be good for the soil next year? Oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, we can we can till in whatever's left, you know. It'll put some good nitrogen in the soil. Okay, all right, so there's the peas. There's the fall peas. Um, right over here is where I pulled up some of the summer tomatoes and planted some fall green beans. The variety is Louisiana purple. They are actually a, a pole bean, so we really like that variety, so... We've got about 40 feet of fall Louisiana purple green beans coming in. Let's go look at the tomatoes. See my armadillo trap? We've had to relocate one armadillo and there's, we think he's got some brothers and sisters, so we'll have to relocate them too. These are some of my later tomatoes. I didn't thin them, I, I didn't prune them. Some of my summer tomatoes, I just let one main vine go. Some some of them I let two main vines go. So I didn't I didn't prune these at all, but I'm just I just let them go and to see what they they gonna do. So um, I figured out with the summer tomatoes which varieties were my favorite, and then I planted their suckers. The little let's see if I can show them a little sucker. This is a big sucker, but anyway, there's a little sucker right there. It's the 
comes off at 45 degrees between the leaf and the vine. So the summer tomatoes, I figured out which ones were my favorite and I, then I grew the suckers. And these are my late summer tomatoes. So oh, I see a treat. That's a rosella. Actually, something's on it, but I'll let the birds have it. So. But anyway, these are the later tomatoes. These are the, these were planted a little bit sooner. Not quite sure why they don't look as good. They've got some fungus going on on them, you can see. I didn't really, I don't think I pruned them. Maybe, I had to prune them for them to look so different from those though, huh? Mm-hmm. All right, let's go this way. There's some, this is some kale left over from the winter. I just put it out here and obviously something's enjoying eating on it, but anyway, that's some kale. Here's my okra. Um, I actually have some white scout squash planted under the okra, so they'll get enough sun to come through. These are... And that's, that's the uh, best size okra patch I've ever seen. Why? Because okra is terrible. You don't like okra? No, I love okra. I mean, but picking okra, I mean... A long row of okra, I'd rather have fire ants on my feet than a long row of okra. <laughs> yeah, I always save okra for last. This it, is this is perfect patch right here. It'll eat you up. And, and lo okra produces a long time. Once it starts producing, it produces till frost. So you can pick every other day, every three days. So this little patch of okra might be all that we need. So um, anyway. Okay, so this is some more of my green beans, Louisiana purple green beans. I need to go ahead and get them um, strung tomorrow. They've already got runners coming, so looks like something's snacking on those leaves a little bit. I might need to take care of that. Um, that's a big pollinator flower. There's my, that is some cinnamon basil, a few peppers. My peppers haven't done great, really. I'm hoping my later peppers, my fall peppers do better, so. There's some okra that came up between my peppers. I'm just gonna use that to kind of support my peppers. This is the patch where we had our corn growing. Um, we've got it prepped and ready to do the winter greens and kale. And uh, what else are we gonna put out here? Uh, that's all that I think we want, is greens and kale. Okay, all right, so we're good to go. That, oh goodness, those hickory nuts are loud when they fall. So next week I'll start planting some carrots. And some other fall vegetables. Next week? Yeah, next week I am. Yeah, in September. September I'm going to start planting carrots. Oh, August is over. Yeah, next week will be September, so. 